Once upon a time, somewhere in the United States, was a dessert table on Thanksgiving Day. While the family feasted on turkey and mashed potatoes and rolls and green bean casseroles, the cornucopia had a question for the pies. So pies, tell me, I heard authors write for pie. Does that mean only authors eat Thanksgiving? Does that mean that only authors eat pie? No, Cornucopia, I think you misunderstood. Pie stands for the author's purpose. An author will write to persuade the reader, to inform the reader, or to entertain the reader. Right now, I'm reading a persuasion article. The author is trying to share his opinion about being too busy. He is trying to get us to slow down and enjoy the little things. He's trying to persuade us. I right now am reading an information book about the pecan tree. Did you know that the word pecan is Native American for stone that requires a rock to crack it? And the capital of the world for pecans is Albany, Georgia. I also found out a pecan tree only produces nuts every two years. An information book gives us new information. Well, darlings, I'm reading a fabulously entertaining book about Johnny Appleseed, the one and only legend. But it takes place in modern times and how he is going out to save the apple trees. It is just a darling book and I am thoroughly entertained. So the last reason an author would write is to entertain you. I overheard the conversation at the dessert table and I have a challenge. I call it the Thanksgiving Pie Challenge. In the month of November, read a persuasion article given to you by Miss Amar and answer the questions. Read an informational book and take a reading counts test if it is a reading counts book or write a summary. And read a chapter book and write a summary or take a reading counts test. If you complete all three, you will be invited to the pie party at the end of the month. Good luck. Keep on reading. Gobble, 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 gobble. Did you get your application? Make sure you go get it today. You guys, you have to get those applications today. Yeah. Did you get your application today? Get your application. Try to get your application. Applications. Get them. Now. Don't forget your application. Go get your application. Don't forget your application. Don't forget. Hurry up. Go do it. Run and get your applications. Don't forget your application. Go ahead and get your applications. Go get those applications today. Did you get your applications? What are you waiting on? Hurry up! Good morning, Lily. Did you pick up your application? No. No, we need fourth grade representatives. Go! Are you going to pick up the application on Monday? Where do I go? The box office. Hey, fifth graders. Meet me at this box office for applications. I don't know, we just have to wait and see. Go get your applications! We need it! We need applications! Third graders, did you get your application yet? Decision to make. <laughs> no.
don't worry, don't worry. You make decisions all the time. Like what to eat, what to buy, what to wear, how to spend your time, who to spend your time with, what you're gonna say, how you're gonna say it, whether or not you put on a dinosaur costume and skate through town. Hey, it's an option, and I'm proud of it. Researchers found this. We make thousands of choices each day. Thousands of them. In fact, the more responsibilities that you have, the more choices you have to make. There's options all up in your face all the time. And on top of all this, with each choice comes a consequence. Every choice that you make leads to something good or not so good. Like that old saying, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes that reason is you ate a whole roll of Oreos in one city. If you excuse me, I gotta take a break. watching this video, that means you're awesome. Congrats. You're awesome. How will you make awesome choices? Here's a few choices for how you can make choices. You could be impulsive. Don't even think about it. Just mindlessly point, take, and do whatever. Disclaimer, I don't recommend this choice for making choices. Now you can do it, but it'll lead to mixed results. It's especially dangerous while picking your wardrobe or defusing a bomb. Can't be impulsive then. Another choice you have when making choices, don't do anything. This is a choice to not make any choices, which is a poor choice. Just stand there, wait, do nothing. It's an option, it's always an option. You could say nothing, do nothing, but a uh, fair warning, then you'll be nothing. Just saying. Another choice for how you can make a choice. Just be a follower. Yeah, just do what everyone else is doing. When you're a follower, you don't really have to think. It's really simple. Just to look around, see what everyone else is doing. Is everyone just complaining about something? You can do that too. Is everyone doing what everyone else is doing? You can do that too. Is everyone eating an entire row of Oreos in one ceiling? Just do that. Uh -oh. Oh, oh. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. I have to make better choices. So being a follower, you can make that choice. It's just a really big problem with that. The world needs you. So how's about this? Focus on being someone worth following. I like that choice. When you're a choice, how you can make your choices, be thoughtful. Warning, this requires thinking. It takes some thought to be thoughtful. But thinking, that's something we should do more often. Think about what do I care about? What's important to me? What kind of world do I want to live in? Do my choices help create that world? I want to live in a world with more dancing. So what do I do? A little bit of dancing. The choices you make help make the world. All of us together make big choices sometimes too. Like we all try to come together and make a big decision. Like in an election, who will lead our country? That's a big decision. Whenever it happens there, there's something that you can't forget. Just how powerful you are. There are no small people and there are no small choices. You, you're making big choices every single day. And they make a big difference. Whether you're president in the big fancy Oval Office or not the president. Or just a cable with a cam phone and some cardboard. Your choices matter on election day and every single day. Real change happens right in your backyard. The real decisions that you think a little are actually a really big deal. The choices we make make our lives. In your life, it's an awesome one. Make the kind of choices that are worthy of that awesome life. I'm gonna make a decision right now. This world needs a little more dancing, so I'm gonna dance right now. <laughs> Why won't you answer my question? You're not really a kid anymore. You can't be kid president forever. They wrote this in all capital letters. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Growing up so hard, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> this is, I don't know. Oh, well, I see we're out of time. Hopefully I can answer that next episode. Bye.